Hi, I'm Sarah Burnett, and we are going to be teaching you about Mycobacterium leprae. Mycobacterium leprae is a pathogenic bacterium that causes leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease. M. leprae is acid fast, meaning it's absorbent of acid used to stain bacteria and the color doesn't come back off. This happens because its cell wall has a lot of mycolic acid and is waxy, typical of mycobacterium, due to a lot of complex lipids that are bound together using covalent bonds that bind at room temperature. It is also aerobic and gram-positive. M. leprae is rod-shaped with a body length between 1 and 8 micro micrometers and a diameter of 0.2 to 0.5 micrometers. Leprosy has been around since biblical times, but the bacterium that causes it was discovered in 1873 by Dr. Gerard Armour Hansen and was actually the first pathogenic bacterium to be discovered to be causing disease in humans. Atypical of gram-positive bacteria, it appears M. leprae has three layers of membrane. It is first encapsulated with a diffused polysaccharide capsule separated from the rest of the cell wall by a low density space, followed by a typical cell membrane surrounding the cytoplasm. The polysaccharide capsule protects the bacteria using lysosomal enzymes and metabolites. Its presence in urine, urine and serum aid in early diagnosis of leprosy. The cell wall has a thinner peptidoglycan layer and is responsible for the uptake of nutrients and has proteins that target T cells. The cell membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer and proteins and is responsible for, for transporting molecules in and out of the bacterium. The cytoplasm contains ribosomes, metabolites, proteins, DNA, and RNA. This is where translation, multiplication, and reproduction occur. It uses binary fission to divide, which is the most common type of asexual reproduction in bacteria. M. leprae is non-modal because it has no cilia or flagella. Typical of mycobacterium, it does not use endospore formation. M. leprae has several features that are unique. It takes 13 days to divide, which is the longest known doubling time of all bacteria. This is one feature that makes it especially difficult to culture artificially in lab media. Researchers couldn't grow it in a lab until the late 1980s and still have not cultured it in vitro. The long dividing time and covalent bonding of the cell membrane also makes leprosy difficult to treat. It has been discovered that the best way to study this bacterium is to infect the foot pads of mice. Leprosy is very specific and has only been found in nature in the nine-banded armadillo and occasionally in three species of primates. Mycobacterium leprae has been known to incubate for periods of up to 30 years before manifesting itself but the mechanism it uses is unknown. The average incubation period agreed upon is three to 10 years. Other features that possibly contribute to the difficulty of culture are that it has the smallest known genome of mycobacteria and its chromosome contains a lot of pseudogenes that aren't functional. The DNA of M. leprae was sequenced in 2001 and was found to have a very small number of genes and pseudogenes compared to its sister bacteria, M. tuberculosis. This suggests that M. leprae has large amounts of decay, possibly the best example of genome reduction in this type of pathogen. The loss of genetic material and other regulatory elements has caused M. leprae to become parasitic and rely on its host for a lot of nutrients and metabolites. The ideal metabolic temperature for M. leprae is 33 degrees Celsius or 91.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That is quite a bit lower than the typical body temperature for humans, causing the hands and feet to be better environments for M. leprae to inhabit. Another unique feature of M. leprae is that it's the only mycobacterium that we know of that infects nervous tissue. M. leprae attacks the Schwann cells surrounding the axons of peripheral nerves. This results in demyelination, nerve injury, and eventually disability because of the loss of sensation and communication in affected areas of the body. It has been suggested that M. leprae also changes the Schwann cells into a different kind of cell that can migrate throughout the body, spreading the disease. This migration would explain the lesions on the epidermis and degradation of extremities, such as fingers, toes, nose, and ears, etc. All right, so my name is Hannah, and I will be talking about the reservoir. The reservoir is a, um, is a place where the disease can multiply and harbor and leprosy has two of those. 
The main one is the human body, and the second is armadillos. All right, so my name is Nay. I'll be talking about the transmission of leprosy. So leprosy is a slow, progressive disease that takes a long time to develop. It is said that an individual must have prolonged contact and time spent with an infect infected person in order to contract the disease. For that reason, it is considered mildly infectious. Direct contact includes, though it takes, um, it takes a while for someone to get infected, being exposed to and having an interaction with nasal secretion and droplets will cause the transmission to happen quicker. Indirect contact includes close and repeated contact with someone. Just like in the last slide that Hannah spoke about, armadillos were, were found to have been infected with leprosy. Um, but it's only, it's only vulnerable to humans if we, of contracting leprosy if we handle or consume them. Um, and this is just because of their body temperature that allows leprosy to live. Hello, this is Philip McKeela here to discuss the signs and symptoms of leprosy. First, we'll go over the differences between signs and symptoms. The signs of a disease are what can be seen on the surface, such as rashes, disfigurement, or secretions. Symptoms are what the disease individual is feeling as a result of their disease, such as rashes, disfigurement, or secretions. Symptoms are what the disease individual is feeling as a result of their disease, such as pain, paralysis, or loss of any in any of their senses. The signs of leprosy include numb, faded patches of skin, ulcers on the soles of the feet, swelling or lumps on the face of or earlobes, loss of eyebrows or eyelashes, nasal congestion, nosebleeds, and enlarged nerves. Symptoms of leprosy include numbness of affected areas on the skin, muscle weakness, paralysis, and blindness. If left untreated, leprosy can cause paralysis and crippling of the hands and feet, shortening of toes and fingers due to reabsorption. We all grew up believing that leprosy caused joints to turn too brittle and fall off like rust would do to a metal hinge. Turns out it's more like a candle that's been burning too long and then melting away. Chronic, non-healing ulcers on the bottoms of feet, nose disfigurement, painful or tender nerves, Reduce the pain around the affected areas and a burning sensation in the skin. This is Philip here once again, and now I'm going to explain how to prevent the spread of leprosy. The best method is to avoid physical contact with those infected by M. leprae. You should avoid handling wild sympathies, mangabe monkeys or nine banded armadillos, as they are very rarely carry M. leprae. Leprosy itself isn't hereditary, but the suspectabil suspectability to it is. No vaccine is commercially available right now, but there have been tests involving the BCG vaccine. Okay, I am going to be now talking about the treatment for leprosy. Um, the treatment depends on the type of leprosy that someone has. They are each treated with a multi-drug therapy that usually lasts between six to 12 months or a single drug therapy, and that is usually for a specific kind of leprosy. So first off, we, uh, I will talk about um, pospicillary leprosy. This is treated as a multi-drug therapy, and it uses two antibiotics, which are adapsone and rifampicin. The next is multibacillary leprosy, and that is treated with the same two antibiotics, as well as one more additional antibiotic, and that is called clofazamine. And then last but not least is um, when you just have 
skin lesions. That is a, um, I guess, lesser version of leprosy, and that is tra treated with a single dose, and it can be treated with rifampicin, minocycline, or olfaxacine. Thanks, Hannah. So now we're going to talk about just the uh, uh, interest in a little bit of history um, for leprosy. So this is actually one of the reasons why I was drawn to um, going into debt with this um, back, or this disease when this assignment first came out was about this man, Jonathan Appella. Now, growing up in Hawaii um, and being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, this story has had a profound impact upon me. So Jonathan Napella was one of the first Hawaiians to be baptized. He was one of the first also to join the church in Hawaii. He was taught and baptized by Elder George Q. Cannon. He later helped him to translate the Book of Mormon from English to Hawaiian, helped to build the first meeting house for saints on the island of Lanai. During this time, leprosy had infected um, and already taken the lives of many native Hawaiian people. Those infected were sent to a place called Kalaupa on the island of Molokai. In 1873, Brother Napella experienced a tragedy which was repeated in almost every village and town in the islands. His beloved Kitty, his beloved wife Kitty, contracted leprosy. She faced confinement on the island of Molokai and the settlement, and at the settlement of Kalaupapa. The site, a small beautiful peninsula on the north coast of the island, was unsurpassed in human sorrow, suffering, and degra degra degradation non-existent facilities and a board of health that knew next to nothing about the disease condemned lepers to suffer under almost unimaginable conditions. Many Hawaiians examples of selfless love and devotion went undiseased to the settlement to accompany their mates or loved ones who were lepers. Brother Napella also chose to go with his wife to the dreaded place rather than be separated from her. A year later, Napella contracted leprosy and was hardly recognized when George Q. Cannon and other saints came to visit him with deformation and lesions to his skin and face. On August 6, 1879, Napella died shortly before his wife Kitty. Now, this is a touching story and a reminder for all of us of the, the sacrifice that um, ancestors and saints have made for the church and just always something touching and um, some sort of inspiration that we can always look back on. Thank you for watching our video and our presentation. Here are some resources for our images that we used and for the information that we taught as well. These sources will also be available in the transcript if you want to look at them more. Enjoy.